Dear listeners of Radio Maria in New York, the following program features Mike Salvatorelli. Welcome. And welcome back to Radio Maria. Mike Salvatorelli with you on my program, Faith Alive. And as promised, we have on our line Gia Vitiello, who is with the pro-life group of St. Benedict's and Throgs Neck. And Gia, always at the end of the month, gives us an update of what's going on both uh, politically and spiritually in the pro-life movement. Gia, welcome once again to Radio Maria. Hi, Mike. Thank you. And so what what can you tell us? What juicy bits of details can you tell us about what's going on uh, that we can conquer this uh, horrible world of abortion uh, and the evilness that it brings? Well, I have two updates, and they're pretty good, uh, happy updates, really. Um, The first one is an update on Bill number 371. I think back in April I mentioned a little bit about that. And the second one is about a co-sponsoring for the Respect for Right of Conscience Act, and I'll explain those two. Um, just a little reminder in regards to Bill 371. Uh, the bill was supported by Planned Parenthood Federation of America as well as NARAL Pro-Choice of America. And basically, the whole bill consisted of four speech restrictions for pregnancy care centers. Um, These restrictions would be including them to stay in their waiting rooms in an advertisement that they neither referred nor, um, neither, neither offered nor referred abortion services and or contraception. Um, basically giving the abortion industry free advertisement on pro-life side. Um, a lot of people aren't aware, but most pregnancy care centers are pro-life. And they are listed under abortion alternatives. Now, the abortion advocates who wanted to pass this bill, um, they considered the term abortion alternative to be too deceptive and misleading for women who were wanting to seek an abortion. Um, There was a lot of problems with this bill, not just in regards to free speech rights, but also because it was targeting one specific group. And those groups were people mainly who, who... you know, declare themselves to be pro-life. And it also would affect religious organizations um, who were providing social services. One of these organizations was Catholic Charities. Um, And it would cause them not only to have, uh, be deep in fines, but after the third strike, they could be threatened with arrest and close down of their facilities. So it was a pretty bad bill. Uh, Before the bill was passed in March, um, the, there was a similar bill that was struck down back in Maryland, and the federal judge in that ruling stated that the bill was unconstitutional and against the First Amendment, uh, First Amendment of free speech. Now, of course, after hearing this, the New York City Council decided to tweak the wording of the bill, rewrite a little bit of it, um, which would remove religious organizations such as Catholic Charities from being placed under that bill. As I stated, the bill was passed um, by a margin of 39-9-1 vote in March. Um, And I I remember being there uh, personally. I was there, and I remember one of the lawyers that was speaking, uh, one of the lawyers from the American Center for Law and Justice, and they're the ones representing the uh, pregnancy care centers. And I remember her stating that they just put a Band-Aid on something that was profusely bleeding. So that can give you an idea of how much they tweaked uh, the wording. They didn't do really much to it. They just did whatever they could to please you know, pro-life people. From what um, I read about, from what I read about the, that particular bill, it seems that the, uh, the justice uh, ruling uh, on this, the, the, uh, the judge himself, really had a bad taste in his mouth about this bill altogether. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, a lot of so people I, did. A lot of people yeah. did. Um, and unfortunately, again, two weeks after the bill was passed, uh, Mayor Bloomberg signed it into law. That bill was to take effect on Thursday, July 14th. And I said was strongly because this is where prayer and faith come in. And Judge William Pauley III temporarily barred the law from being going into effect. And he basically stated that the law was subject to strict First Amendment scrutiny because it would compel the censors to speak government-crafted messages. So that's a victory for us, and definitely, if anything happens more on that one, I will definitely update you on that. Great. Now the second one. Now the second one. The second one is really all about the co-sponsorship 
for the Respect of Conscience Act. What is this? Well, on July 19th, the Institute of Medicine submitted a list of recommendations to the Department of Health and Human Services on mandated services that they think that doctors, nurses should be providing to women. Those services are preventive services. What does this mean? Well, if the human and health services were to accept these mandates, it would mean that the new law would allow, like I said, healthcare professionals to be required to offer services which include birth control, IUDs, and the abortion-induced drug, including Ella. Now, they would so what require this. Basically, if you, if, you, if, you, if you cut to the chase, if you're a Catholic hospital, guess what you would be required to do? Exactly. You would be forced to do it under the law. Now, it would also, they would also have to promote these preventive services through education and counseling. So, again, it just doesn't stop with the, a doctor visit and the doctor offering you this. They just want to push it even more. It would also affect insurance companies, not just one, not just two. It would affect insurance companies across the board. They would have, be forced and be required to cover these services. Um, the good thing is is that the, the Health Care Act does not have a conscience clause, and the conscience clause would basically prevent – um, individuals who have a moral objection to these practices uh, from, you know, being affected. So this is the good news. Uh, two congressmen, Congressman Representative Jeff Fordenberry, a Republican from Nebraska, and Dan Berenden, a Democrat from Oklahoma, um, have both introduced the Respect for Rights of Conscience Act. And basically this will, and I'm quoting, it will be allow individuals to, quote, provide, purchase, and enroll in health care coverage that is consistent to their particular beliefs and moral obligations. So far, from what I've heard, 24 other um, congressmen have co-signed the bill, and this is where I would say other people who want to take a, a, a chance, you know, contact your congressman and tell them to vote, co help co-sponsor this bill H.R. 1179, the, the Right of Conscience Act, because, you know, we just can't have government telling us what to do, and we have to protect our own religious rights. Gio, thank you so much for the update, and that's, uh, I hope everybody, you're listening, you heard, take action, because this is our faith and this is what we believe. We are in a war. This is the war that's going on on this plane. Of course, the big war that comes in the next world, that's a different situation. The previous program features Mike Salvatorelli, a program brought to you from the studio of Radio Maria in New York.